Nikon just crushed Canon and Sony with the Nikon Z9. Is Nikon about to do the same with the Nikon Z8? Are parts and component shortages the only things holding them up? Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you can stay up to date on all the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Why has Nikon dropped to 11.3% worldwide sales when cameras like the Nikon Z9 are well respected, are, are reviewed very well, and well, as soon as they get them in stores, they're flying off the shelves. Well, I've got some really interesting sales data from the Japanese camera market from four major retailers. And what it's showing is that the Nikon Z9 is performing very well. Over at Yodobashi, the Nikon Z9 is in second place. Yodobashi is one of the top Japanese retailers and quite often what you see in their top 10 and their top five is high-end full-frame mirrorless cameras. Although you do see the A6400, the R10 and the R7, as well as the Fujifilm, X-H2S in there as more affordable cameras. I know, I get it. The Fujifilm X-H2S isn't exactly an affordable camera. However, over at Camera Kitamura, a camera store that's more known for selling more affordable cameras, we can see once again the Nikon Z9 at $5,500, once again in second place. And again in second place at Map Camera, the Nikon Z9 seems to be holding out, doing very well in all these camera stores where we see other cameras kind of jumping into top position or falling out of top position, and unlike previously, the Sony a7 IV isn't dominating that top spot. However, the Nikon Z9 does finally manage to find itself in first place over at Fujiya Camera. I know what you're thinking. Domination happens when you're in first place time after time, all the time. And this is just one camera. It's the Nikon Z9. But the point that I'm trying to make in this video and the question I'm trying to answer is, what is Nikon's problem? Why are they in third place, a distant third at 11.3% market share, worldwide global shipments, according to SEPA. And I don't think it's lack of imagination. I don't think it's lack of innovation. The Nikon Z9, well, it attracts many people. Many people are appealed by this camera. Not appealed, that's the wrong word. Many people just love what this camera can do. The reviews are saying many good things about the camera. The Nikon Z9, whenever they can get these into the shops, they sell, they move, and then people have to wait two, three, or even four months, or even longer, before they show up in stock again. Nikon's big problem, I happen to think, is just getting the necessary parts and components. But here we are, three years in, we had, this all started back in 2020 when we had problems getting parts and other components because of, well, well, we all know what happened. And then again in 2021 and here again in 2022. Sony has done very well at being able to source components and has found other suppliers to, well, provide the necessary parts and components, materials, to be able to get their cameras out much better than Canon and Nikon. And Canon has also made some progress as well, getting out more cameras a little bit more quickly than Nikon. And that brings us to the Nikon Z8. The Nikon Z8 is supposed to be, well, depending on who you talk to, and I happen to think it's gonna be a mini Z9 priced at quite a bit cheaper and cheaper than the Canon EOS R5, but competing against the Canon EOS R5 more so than the Sony a7R5. I think it's gonna be able to offer oversample 8K video 8K over sample 4K video basically become a competitor to the Canon EOS R5, but better in some regards because, well, the Canon EOS R5 has been out for many years. Other people think, including Nikon rumors, that the Nikon Z8 is gonna be basically a mirrorless version of the D850. And whichever scenario this camera follows, whether it's gonna be a mini Z9 or a mirrorless version of the D850, it's gonna sell well, but only if Nikon can source the necessary components. And that's gonna be Nikon's biggest challenge here in 2023. The Nikon Z6 Mark III, the Nikon Z7 Mark III, and the Nikon Z8. To be able to release those in the first half, maybe even in the first quarter, to be able to deliver enough of these cameras, as well as the Nikon Z9, to deliver enough cameras to the store so you can buy them. Well, Nikon's really gotta solve their supply chain problems. Three years in, the excuses are starting to wear thin. And I know we see this with other components too. I was just trying to buy some deodorant the other day and I use Right Guard and I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. There was nothing in the stores. There was nothing online. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I thought, well, okay, um, yeah, that's fine. I'll just um, not use it for a little while. I mean, what other choices do I have? But the point that I'm trying to get to here is Nikon is producing some really good cameras. When they came out with the Nikon Z9, announced it back in October of last year, I was completely impressed with this camera. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm just a Canon fan, well then go ahead and look at those videos I covered in October and everything I had to say about that camera was glowing. And afterwards, I'm still enamored by the camera. The Nikon Z9 is very affordable, $5,500 for a flagship mirrorless camera, 
with such incredible stills and video capabilities. An Icon Z8, 120 frames per second shooting at around 19 or 11 megapixels, all the way up to 20 frames per second shooting lossless RAW with a burst speed of 1.2 gigabytes per second, something only possible if you're shooting with dual CF Express cards type B, or at least one CF Express type B card. You certainly can't do this Sony with the CF Express type A cards. You just don't have nearly enough bandwidth. And I really do think that the Nikon Z8 is going to be a winner whenever it happens to get to the market. And like Canon with the R1, these cameras are taking far too long for their customers to wait for. Some people are switching and saying, hey, look, you know what? The Sony A7R5 or the Sony Alpha 1 or even the A7 IV, well, that's, you know, I'm tired of waiting. I'm switching. I can't take it anymore. But rest assured, based on the latest rumors that we have, Nikon is coming out with a bunch of cameras here in 2023. And I know I keep saying here in 2023, it's still December, but I'm, I'm a forward thinker. I'm always planning into the future. So for me, 2022 is already done. It's already wrapped up. I put a bow on it and I'm focused on 2023. And 2023 can be a really big year for Nikon. It can be a really big year for Canon. They've got so many cameras ready to come out the door. And the Nikon Z8, the Z6, and the Z7, both Mark III's, well, they're already ready. They're sitting there in the factory waiting for components to come in, waiting for a sufficient number of components to come in to be able to produce them, to be able to develop enough of an inventory to be able to announce it and then deliver it instead of you having to wait six months, a year, or even a year and a half to be able to get your hands on one of these cameras because it's not enough announcing a really good camera. If they can't follow through with the inventory, well, then what's the point? And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors, especially what's happening with the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z6 Mark III, the Nikon Z7, or Canon and Sony, you see, I follow all the major camera brands, all the major makes, all the major news and rumors. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, followed by choosing all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified, saving you from having to scrub all the latest Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, your favorite channels, websites, print magazines, whatever it is. Again, I cover all the major camera news, rumors, news, reviews, all here in one spot. And if you want to support the channel further, well, then use my affiliate links down below to purchase from Amazon.com or B&H. Oh, by the way, a bit of an update for you. A couple of weeks ago, I did a review of the Bluetti EB3A. Right now, it's raining really hard outside. You probably can't hear it. The wind is picking up. There's always a chance of a power outage when this happens. So to ensure that I wasn't having any interruption in this video, no power outage, I've got the entire studio working off this. So I've been shooting for, well, how long now? 13 minutes and 11 seconds. It can easily go three hours with everything in my studio hooked up. So I thought I can shoot and I completely forgot that I'm on the Bluetti EBA3A, uh, but it's nice to have a backup power source. So when your power source isn't as reliable or you've got some major storms coming through, it's nice to know that you can keep shooting without worrying about the weather. That's it for now. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you again soon.